right, I am back. I had no brilliant ideas about what's going on, going wrong with this, but uh, let's see. Let's keep looking. Hmm. Well, no, that's not our error. Uh, let's see. Just looking for kind of any other examples of the problem that we were seeing before, uh, where it's just not compiling. The trait connection is not implemented for us. So this is the error that we were seeing before. Documentation. It's an extension of TSL itself. Let's look at the docs here. Where does where does that say? Okay. It's designed to be used together with the main diesel crate and only provides async variants of core diesel traits to perform actual I/O work. This includes async counterparts for the following traits. So here's an example. It's a module for pooled connection. A pool implement implementation for diesel async based on BB8. Async diesel connection manager. Hmm. Let's go look at the code that we're using in common API lib. Now we are using diesel async here, which is good. Let's, uh, let's go split screen. There we go. Diesel async diesel connection manager. Diesel async uh, async PG connection new. We provide the URL. And then we do pool builder. Which, uh, okay, here we use BB8 pool. Should we, should we be using this? Slicing pooled connection BB8 pool of type C. Yeah, what is what is C in this context? Manager config C. Huh. What if I do this? No, no, can't do that. I have to specify what this is. Um. fun. Hold on, what is what is the C here? So async diesel connection manager C. Uh, oh yeah, it's diesel async async PG connection. All right, so that's what the, this argument should be. Does that make that happy? I mean, so it, there's a few different strategies, right, for trying to figure out things, especially when you have when you're new to something. Uh, one is to kind of like focus on where the error is manifesting and kind of just explore out from there. Um, but especially if like this is all stuff you've written, you might want to like go back and 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 go to like the source of where the thing is coming from. Maybe the the error is from that initial thing and is just not surfaced until you actually try to do something with it. 
you know, I mean, there's lots of ways of troubleshooting an issue. And sometimes to not get stuck, you just need to take a different approach. Now, if I save that, hey, look, there's no error anymore. Uh, that magically resolved it somehow. Okay, so it seems like we should have a list of results or something of results by taking 10 items from our table. Um, so let's, let's do this and then let's see here. How do we, so what is in results is a question. Right. What is, what is, what is the, what is the shape of this, this thing? What, what is the shape of results? Um, honestly, don't know. Let's see. Well, we don't want to do that. Uh, can we do something like that? just to see the output could uh, so we're in credit API now what I need to do is I need to rebuild the the image so I think this is the command docker build dash t credit API we specify a build argument for service name of credit API we uh, actually need to be in the directory above us to run that command. So this is a, a Docker file we worked on. Was that last stream? One of the streams. So hopefully this still works. Hmm. Let's take a minute. How are we doing? Oh, that's interesting. It's uh, something I, oh, we have bill failure. Uh, I didn't like that. Something broke. Um, something that I, oh, that is really interesting. Because Twitch tells me there are three viewers, but in the chat, I just, I, I don't get how it works, but I see some names I've seen before and some that I don't, but it's a thing that I've started doing recently is using the, the users in chat thing. And I can see uh, one thing I've, I've come to realize is that the viewer count is not actually all that accurate. <laughs> And that uh, sometimes there are more people than it says, and sometimes there are fewer. But uh, thanks for hanging out and watching. I normally say that kind of the end of the stream, but it's worth saying more than once. All right, so what is this error? So cred API type alias pool is private. Right. So... Right. So I broke things because I used to have a, a public type alias here. Okay, so what we can do is we can get rid of that use. And then we can just say pool here. And... Uh, let's see. Is it this? 
It's almost that. Expected diesel async connection manager. Hmm. Wait, what was this before? Let's let's take a step back. So when it was like this, this sort of worked. Wait, 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 go forward. Oh, this was BB-8 pool? I see. But that was wrong. It should be deslicing pool connection BB-8 pool builder. Then why can't we just say pool builder? The function or associated item builder exists for this, but its trait bounds were not satisfied. The following trait bounds were not satisfied. Async diesel connection manager, async diesel connection manager. Why are there two of these? Uh, this is, this is wrong. Aha, all right. So now we run that Docker build again. Maybe it will fully compile this time. <laughs> I'm hoping real soon that we'll actually be able to see uh, data from the database table showing up in React Admin. That is kind of the big thing. <laughs> I thought that would be like a thing we would get done earlier than this, but uh, things come up as they do. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, yes. Down under. Ah, uh, well. All right, we're compiling common API. Okay, that's that's a good sign. So it looks like this is, aw. Okay, so this tells us a little bit more about what's going on with results. So, um, consider giving results an explicit type where the type for type parameter U was specified. Okay, we, we don't care about the unused import. I mean, we can remove it, but it's not a big deal. We don't need that async connection. Um, so type annotations needed for vec underscore and results. So it doesn't know what it's a vector of. Okay, let's go look at the diesel docs. So this doesn't give a, a type for results, but it's also not trying to print out results either. Uh, let's try this. Let's, ah, uh, this is complaining again. Aw, what happened? This was, well, that's interesting. One, um, okay. We're not getting the same error here that we're getting when we're trying to actually build. That's not great. Um, huh, let's try closing that file and reopening. Okay, what is this complaining about now? Type inside async block must be known in this context. Cannot infer. Okay, maybe that's actually the same error. Maybe this is, should be just like a vec of something. Um, and that's what the problem is. Okay. Um... Hmm. 
Like, this is not right, but... There we go. This at least gives us something concrete to be like, okay, obviously it's not a ve vector of unsigned 32-bit integers. Um, What is it then? I mean, it's it's uh, a vector of streams, right? Uh, where is that coming from? It's coming from models. Okay, it doesn't like that though. Not satisfied. What if we get rid of the select? We'll keep the offset. Here we go. All right, we have a different error. That's progress. <laughs> Stream does not implement debug. Well, we can fix that. All right. What's the offset? So, um, like when you're retrieving a set of results, like from a database table, you will want, we can't just say give us a list of everything, right? So we're gonna want some number of results. So in, uh, in database terminology, the limit is how many results we want, and the offset is where we want to start in the list of results. So, for example, in the UI, which we haven't looked at the UI in a minute, let's pull up the UI that we're trying to serve. In the UI, we're going to show a list of results. Yeah, items 1 through 10, exactly. Uh, here we just have one, but if we had the first 10 items, it would have a limit of 10 and an offset of zero. And then when we went to the second page of results, it would have, it, assuming we're showing 10 items per page, it would have a limit of 10 still, but an offset of um, 10. It would start on the 10th item, including the 10th item. So being able to implement, implement pagination, in other words. Um, like this part is just dummy data, right? This and this stuff is all just fake. This is what we're working to replace. Yep, page results pagination. Um, so let's try doing a build again. Maybe this time it will work. <laughs> and then we'll actually be able to see some data coming from the database in the console. And there it is. So uh, Docker Compose up. Will that restart the container? I guess we're going to find out. Let me pull up Docker. Pub pool? Yeah, so pub is short for public in, in the Rust programming language. And the pool represents the connection pool, so the um, how to talk to the database. Uh, so if we look here, we can see CRUD API was started nine seconds ago. And we can look in at it. You can see it's running. So if I were to go to the front end, and uh, I mean, just hitting it <laughs> caused a bunch of stuff to log. So let's see here. Awesome, so we can actually see like logging of the database request. Yeah, happy to answer questions. Thank you for the questions. Otherwise, it's just me sitting here kind of like talking <laughs> to to nobody slash everybody. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> so we are executing statement S5 with parameters. Blah, 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 blah. And we see a result. So here we go. So we can see this is data coming back from our Postgres database. You still listening, Brainless? All right. Well, I, I really appreciate it. Also, please don't let me distract you in a way that will <laughs> mess up your your production work because you were saying that you're, you're you're changing something really sensitive. So, but thanks for hanging out. All the same. So we have uh, a stream record from the database. There it is. That's the one that I made earlier. The title test two, description test, prefix test. Uh, with the empty URLs. So that's there. Now we just need to take that and return it instead of returning the dummy data. <laughs> and we will uh, be one step closer to having a working thing. Uh, let's see, how can we do this? So let's do this. Um, this list here is the data that we're running, wanting to return. And so we're going to move this. We're going to call this uh, prepared, prepared results, right? So this is going to be kind of like a, an incremental transformation to get us to what we want, or it's just going to do it for us. Um, No, that's not really what I want. So let's say let prepared results equals the thing I just cut, right? So now this is exactly the same as the thing that was just there. <laughs> um, except this is not valid because this is, okay, how are we gonna do this? So this needs to be Hmm. So th the reason we were able to express this data in this format is because we were using this JSON macro that allowed us to put in data in this format. If we want to get a step closer to actually getting the data from the database, like simulating that, then we need to get rid of the macro and we need to express this. Uh, I am assuming I could do multi-line comments like this, but as um, express this data, uh, but not in JSON, right? Nope. It's, it's stuck in a loop. Um, how do we do that? How do we represent? What does, what does the, um, the JSON macro actually do is a question. Uh, that's coming from, is that coming from Axum or let's, let's say it's coming from Axum. Let's look this up. Um, let's assume that it is and see if we can find it. Is it not? This is the only results. Oh, it is from Sir to JSON. Okay. Um, let's do this. Rust. Yeah, Sir is a framework for serializing and de deserializing Rust data structures. Structs and en enums in JSON. So I think what we need to do, so here's, here's kind of, here, here's kind of the thought process, right? So we have a struct in 
models that represents the data, the, the shape of the data for a stream as it is in the database. We also currently have um, a, a slightly different thing, which is the shape of the data that the front end is expecting, right? And it's pretty similar, right? We have an ID, we have a title, we have a description, um, but we have some additional things here. We have like topic IDs, we have different names for things. And for the sake of simplicity, sometimes what you will do is you, will, you, you can use the same definition of the shape of the data in the database and in the front end and all the middle tiers, right? You could do that, but then you end up in a situation where you want to do things like you have these topic IDs, but this topic IDs, this is not part of the table. Like the topic IDs are probably in a separate table and you're gonna do a join and you're gonna pull data in. And so you're not gonna have a strut representing a table reflect what is being returned in the API. They're not one to one. And they're beyond kind of certain limited cases, the an API that you're building to service the front end is not going to match one to one with your database tables. Um, maybe a kind of a, a logical conclusion to that is doing something like using GraphQL to express like a whole other query language for your front end to use to uh, pull data. We're, we're not, I'm, not, I'm not doing that for this, but you could, and I have uh, in other projects. But what I'm, what I'm thinking right here is I want to define a struct probably um, somewhere that is going to define the shape of the data for, well, that's a problem, isn't it, right? Because again, this method is supposed to service not just the streams, but uh, a bunch of other kinds of records. So how's that going to work? How is that going to work? Hmm. What I don't want to do is I don't want to implement get list for every kind of thing. Um, I could, ooh. The first thing that comes to mind in Rust is, you know, defining a struct that represents kind of the, the front end view of a stream. And then I could uh, define a trait that the struct would implement that would identify the database model and then connect all these things together. Something like that, that that's a possibility. Um, I don't want to get that far into this. I, I, maybe that's where we'll go, but right now what I want to do is I want something that works. And so maybe what I'll do here is define a struct that matches what we want to return to the front ends. And then I'll transform the result from the database into that struct. And then I'll return that. Right. So then what I would do is I would create a, a struct. And again, this is not long term, this is not going to work as a kind of a, a way of doing this, because we're going to need to do um, it's going to need to be more generic. But for now, stream view, I'll call this for the moment. And uh, this is going to be very similar to this, except how it's not. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a ID title description. Uh, we're not going to have a thumbnail URL. We'll have a thumbnail. I'm assuming let's, um, let's look in our front end real quick in the list view. Yeah, it is thumbnail, thumbnail, topic IDs. Those are the things we're interested in, right? 
so we'll have a thumbnail and we don't even show i mean we could I, I don't know why i pulled up the source code we can just look in the ui so here's here are the columns that we can see right title thumbnail topic created at and updated at so those are the only things that we really need to return here right um we don't need a description So we'll have title. Uh, we don't have a prefix. We don't have a speech audio URL. We have created that, updated that, thumbnail, title, ID. Uh, we have to return the ID because React Admin needs that, even if we're not showing it in the UI. All of these things need to return the ID of the record so that it can be linked up in the UI. Um, and then the other thing that we need to include here is the list of topics. And let's say that it's a vector of UUIDs. Let's assume that all of our foreign keys will be like that. And then uh, we don't need queryable or selectable. This is not a this is not a struct representing a database table. It's a struct representing um, what is what is okay. Let's do this. So how do we? How do we rust? <laughs> uh, right, so we do like uh, stream view. Okay. Use from YMD opt instead. We have some fake data uh, here that we're returning, and uh, what's what is this unhappy about? The trait bound stream view survey sur serialize is not satisfied. The trait is not implemented um, right, so we need to derive serializable. Or serialize. Cannot find drive macro. Uh, is that not the right thing? Fortunately, I have the docs here. Examples. Serialize for custom map type. No, serialize fields is camel case. Yes, much JSON. Basically, what's happening here, right? We have now a Rust data structure containing some dummy data, but dummy data that corresponds to what we would be pulling from the database. And what I want to do is I want to hand it to Axum to uh, have it return as JSON, right? Now I'm getting an error. And I want to figure out implementing serialize. The trait serialize looks like this. Can we can we use drive? Mm -hmm. We have certy, and presumably we have the right features. Let's check that out in CRUD API. Certy, uh, certy JSON derive. Okay. On structs and enums that you want to serialize, import the derive macro as use. Okay, really? Okay, there we go. We can copy it. Semicolon. Uh, the trait bound UUID UUID serialize is not satisfied. Um, okay, so what we're going to do for the view is that we don't need a UUID data structure. We're just going to have a string. Why is this complaining? Uh, 
Uh, okay, so created that and updated that will also be strings. And then we're gonna have uh, GitHub Copilot regenerate this dummy data. There we go. <laughs> and uh, this is complaining because we're not actually using the results, but that's fine, we're gonna get there. <laughs> Are you? Are you having fun for you, Iago? All right, so hopefully uh, we will see some results if I do another build. Okay, and then we'll do Docker compose up. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then, so if we go back to the Docker container, we can see it was just restarted. And I think as soon as we click into the UI, how am I liking the Docker file chef? It seems to be working pretty well. It seems pretty fast in terms of making changes and rebuilding. And um, as long as I don't change the cargo, Tommel, it seems fine. All right, yeah, so with React Admin, you don't even have to like refresh or navigate around. Yeah, it's a, I'm, thanks again for sharing the uh, kind of the example Docker file. That uh, definitely, I, I probably would not have <laughs> gone quite as far into it if you hadn't provided such a nice uh, starter for it. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so with React Admin, like if you navigate away and you navigate back, you can see the activity in the back end. It is like refreshing data. Uh, it's pretty aggressive about that. There's like caching stuff you can do and other things, but I'm not worried about it. Um, so at this point, if we look at the network tab and we hit refresh, so we can see the request going to the endpoint, our record streams, and we can see a response. And you can see zero as the ID. You can see this created at timestamp, topic ID zero. And that reflects the fake data that we're uh, <laughs> showing uh, in the UI. So another step complete. So the next step is to transform the results into a, a vector of stream view. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's see, see what Copilot comes up with. So this, uh, actually does not look too bad, right? So this is going to take results, which is our database result vector, and it's going to make a iterable thing and it's going to map over the streams. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird with rust. So there are like two different string types. There's a str and a string type. And I think at one point I knew what that was all about. I've, I've kind of forgotten. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see. So does this compile? It does. All right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do another build. And uh, hopefully this compiles too. There it is. And then Docker compose up. What time is it? You know, I should uh, look into getting uh, lunch started. One second. Okay, so if I were to go back to the UI now, I, hey look, there's different data. We have data actually coming from the database. All right. Hmm.
Oh. Well, that's a problem. Okay. Well, um... Hmm. It's not much. And of course, when we click into this, we don't even see the same data that we saw before, right? Because uh, the we we were just working on the, the getting the list of results. And that that works, sort of. Hey, now we have a UUID ID here. Um, we have an empty list of topic IDs. You know, it's it's progress. Um, let's let's take some notes though on the next steps. I think uh, I think I'm gonna have to. I'm not going to be able to do the full three hours for the stream today, but I do have some good news to go with the bad. So um, let me let me take a note down and then I'll I'll share that. <laughs> so uh, wait, I have I mean I have a I renamed the to dos file because I don't want to keep the to dos in here. Do I have? Um, Okay, I'm not using GitHub issues. I'm using GitHub projects. So let's go over to GitHub. So this project that I've been working on and sharing on stream is uh, at GitHub, github.com slash Sabin slash glowing telegram. And uh, as I'm working on this on stream and off, off stream, I am uh, pushing up these changes here. Um, and then we have a little project here. So there we go. Uh, implement first CRUD API endpoint. That's not even to do that. That's really, well, it's in progress. Well, it's not really done until the full thing is working, but it's, it's in progress. Um, so a new thing to kind of figure out is figure out how to have our get list endpoint handle multiple tables cleanly. Right, so that that's the big thing that I still don't really know how I want to do. Uh, so I'll put that there as a to do, and maybe next stream I will actually remember to look at this <laughs> list of things. Um, but yeah, okay. So that that's saved. Let's also commit progress so far um, for uh, getting list of streams. All right, so now uh, the news. So tomorrow I will be streaming at the usual time um, in the uh, evening for me, doing some more Create Astral, getting really pretty close to finishing up that pack. And then um, my plan is on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning, to also do additional coding streams. So it won't just be one day a week anymore. Um, I will also be streaming uh, in the mornings um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, probably initially continuing to work on this project since it's uh, there's so much to do, <laughs> so much to figure out. Um, and then probably diversify. I, I do eventually have things I wanna work on with Daily Jewel. And also on um, some other things, I think we were talking about, um, I think we were talking, was that Friday? Uh, Brainless, we were talking about uh, uh, something, something, something leak code. Hold on, can I, can I switch desktops without it messing up the stream? I don't have that up anyway. Oh, interesting, it does show. Leak code, yes, that's right. Um, so because I'll have more streams to do more, more coding stuff, more time to kind of do other things besides just trying to make progress on the project. So try to, you know, mix it up. Um, so I'm just kind of playing that by ear. Um, but yeah, all right. So that's, that's the news <laughs> for now. Uh, and, uh, with that. I'm going to I'm going to call it here for today. Uh yeah, and that last change is pulled up. Hey, why is the uh the credits thing not showing up? 
Aw. What if I refresh? What's up with that? My credits thing is busted. Okay, well, anyway, thanks so much, uh, Victor Amos and All Good 221 for following. Yeah, I hope you and everyone else have uh, a good rest of your day. Uh, assuming it's Sunday, you know, time zones are always fun. But uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube later, uh, which I, I think some people are, I've seen a lot of uh, good responses uh, and lots of lots of hours watched, uh, especially the coding videos. So if you're if you made it in all the way to the end of the video. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.